Tonight on Q2, door to door. I hope that young people get all the information they need and turn out. As election day nears, one group is aiming to make sure everyone understands what's on this year's Montana ballot. Plus reservations over a resort. Um, it was a real shock to hear about this resort. A 90 acre project near Livingston is creating quite a stir. We'll have the details. And dueling dinos. So the dueling dinosaurs, in my opinion, the way we took them out of the ground, they're a Christmas present waiting to be unwrapped. A unique Montana discovery now 20 years old will be unveiled for the world to see. The MTN 430 News starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Monday. I'm Andrea Liu. It's Election Day, of course, just a week away. Nationally, the presidential election is drawing all the attention, but across Montana, there are several important measures and races on this year's ballot. One group, Forward Montana, is finishing their push as they look to go door to door, making sure residents and Billings know exactly what's at stake on the ballot. Our Marcus Kakova takes us there. We are just about a week away from Election Day, and it's a beautiful day. And because of that, groups like Forward Montana say this is the perfect time to get outdoors, go knocking on doors, and find out, do residents in Billings know what's on their ballot? I think it's just such a fun life. How many steps would you say you get in while you, <laughs> while you do this? I would say about one turf is like two to three miles, depending on the day. So I usually walk like six miles a day. Those miles have meaning for 34-year-old Perry Kimmick, who says she's had politics on her mind since the seventh grade. I can't see leaving this sort of work because I'm really passionate about making sure that our democracy is reflective of us. She's the senior organizing manager for Eastern Montana's Forward Montana. Our big thing is not left, not right, but forward. A group that describes itself as nonpartisan, focusing on younger voters. There's not a lot of policy that reflects young folks. Things like affordable housing, climate justice, um, voting rights even. Seeing people flee from home makes her want to engage because she says Montana should reflect the people who want to keep living here. I've seen a lot of young people end up leaving Montana. I grew up in Billings. I was born and raised here. Um, a lot of my friends have moved away since high school. So a week from Election Day and the group is shifting from registering voters and moving towards informing. And we asked the candidates questions. We asked the Montana Supreme Court some questions, asked their opinions on a few things, and then we have some ballot initiative language at the bottom. While most might assume this is seasonal to election cycles, Perry says it's year-round work that represents a change in how future generations view their votes. Young people especially are feeling increasingly um, distant from party politics and are more issue voters. You don't have to necessarily vote for a party for that, but you can find candidates who reflect your values, no matter what, you know, whether they're Republican, Democrat, Independent. Marcus Kakova, MTN News. Tonight, the community of Lame Deer is uniting to remember eight-year-old Marquez deputy Ontiveros. He was shot and killed on Wednesday, with a suspect remaining on the loose tonight and an overnight curfew still in effect. Tonight, a wake is being held in his honor at 7 o'clock, with a funeral set for tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Both the wake and the funeral being held in Lame Deer at the Allen Rowland Gymnasium. Northern Cheyenne law enforcement is calling the boy's death a senseless act of violence. And as of now, there are few details that have been released into the crime other than reports on social media saying he was killed in a drive-by shooting. McDonald's now is facing multiple lawsuits after dozens have become sick, eating onions off the restaurant's quarter pounder meal. 13 of the 61 E. coli cases are in Montana, Colorado seeing the most at 26. Despite the legal trouble, the chain announced the quarter pounder is now back on the menu, only this time without onions. Daniel Grossman has the latest on this E. coli scare. McDonald's says its quarter pounders are returning to the menu after testing showed its beef patties were not the source of an outbreak of E. coli. The burger was pulled in about 900 restaurants in mostly Midwestern and Mountain states last week. The Food and Drug Administration is working to confirm whether onions from a McDonald's supplier in Colorado Springs are the source of the contamination. The supplier, Taylor Farms, recalled several onion products last week. I think today the risk is low to the public. 
As of Friday, at least 75 people have gotten sick in 13 states. 22 have been hospitalized and one person died in Colorado. Symptoms include fever, diarrhea, vomiting, and signs of dehydration. I think if it gets more serious than that and you can't stay hydrated, then that's really when you want to seek out that treatment. This outbreak comes as McDonald's is trying to lure customers back who have objected to higher prices. McDonald's stock took a 7% hit when the outbreak news came out last week. They took swift action by taking the quarter pounders off the menu. I think that was a smart move. Uh, they've been out there communicating that it had nothing to do with their beef. Um, and so I think these were all smart moves. There certainly will be an impact, but I think some of this will be mitigated. McDonald's has extended its $5 value meal promotion through the end of the year. Dan Grossman, Scripps News, Denver. been a while since we've had some weather to talk about. It's been warm and dry and now we're looking at the potential for snow into the mountain foothills up to five inches in some places and then heavy snow into the big horns and the bear tooth, especially the big horns. We could be looking at perhaps a foot and a half in some places, especially north facing slopes. We're seeing those showers starting to develop now in the Red Lodge foothills and starting to spread out as we look into the eastern plains. A lot of this not making the ground yet, but that's going to change tonight heading into tomorrow. A proposed resort in the Paradise Valley is causing quite the stir. The 90 acre project could include 100 cabins, a spa and a restaurant, but not everyone is happy about it. MTN's Heaven Vaughn reports. As somebody who lives here on Seuss Creek, who plans on spending the rest of my life here, my kids plan on raising their kids here. Um, it was a real shock to hear about this resort. After hearing whispers of a resort planned for the area, Seuss Creek residents like Maggie McGuain were surprised to find out that their rural neighborhood could soon see a hundred cabins, a spa, and a restaurant. We are used to things growing and popping up throughout the valley. It's become a real destination, but those things are generally along the paved road and easy to access. The current owner of the property, Robert S. Papper, would sell the 90-acre plot to a Miami-based Flex Capital Group, proposing an event space, pools, a gym, along with short-term rentals. It's the equivalent of building a small town up Seuss Creek. Max Yortsberg with the Park County Environmental Council says the area is known for its wildlife, like bears and moose, that could be displaced by the development. And currently, Park County has no oversight of the project. We don't really have any local review process or, or, or local oversight on a county level for a uh, development of this nature since it's not a subdivision. It's really easy to spot. It's on the other side of the road. Residents express concern over the location's ability to handle increased traffic and water usage. One of the reasons that we were so surprised by this proposal is because the road itself is, a you know, rural dirt road. It's not the kind of road that we could imagine a lot of commercial traffic on. It makes me wonder how much these this capital company has spent time in Paradise Valley because it's a very strange choice for an enterprise like this. MTN reached out to the developer, but they did not respond to questions on the progress of acquiring the property. Max says residents are hoping to discuss options at a public work session in the near future. My life has been so positively impacted by the rural and agricultural heritage of Paradise Valley. It's what makes this valley so special. And I want other generations to experience it the way that I got to experience it as a child. In Park County, Heaven Van, MTN News. The Montana Department of Livestock confirms the 25th detection of highly pathogenic avian influenza or bird flu. This time it's in Flathead County. The birds in this case were in a backyard flock and sick and dead waterfowl were found on wetlands nearby. The contamination is being leaked to wild birds, but additional testing will need to be done to confirm. The viral disease is spread through migratory waterfowl and typically infections are in domestic poultry. They follow fall and spring migrations. Signs that a bird is infected include swollen eyes, a drop in egg production and discoloration, but the most common sign is sudden death of a bird. The last time the disease was detected in Montana was in January. 
A nearly two decade old Montana fossil discovery is now ready for unveiling and study in North Carolina. The rare find of two dinosaurs came in the Hell Creek Formation in Phillips County. Our David J dives deeper into this dino duo and what makes it so special. The man known as the dinosaur cowboy worked on the dueling dinosaurs about 10 miles in that direction. Now he has this spot. He's been working on this for two years with his family, has about five more years ahead. And he says in his 30 years of dinosaur hunting, this is the best sight that he's ever had. It looks like a fairly complete, possibly, Tyrannosaurus rex tooth. Clayton Phipps finds a T-Rex tooth on what he calls his best site ever for dinosaur fossils. A piece of every dinosaur known from the Hell Creek Formation I found at this site. The Hell Creek Formation near Jordan was once close to the ocean and stretches into parts of the Dakotas and Wyoming. All the Hell Creek Formation, which is a world famous fossil bearing layer from the end of the dinosaur times, the last dinosaurs on Earth uh, are found in this formation. Phipps' idea of a full-time paleontological life first started to take shape back in 2006 when he and friends made a big discovery at another site of a Tyrannosaurus rex and a Triceratops. I think they're very in very close proximity to where they died, and I think they killed each other. It's obviously they weren't friends. That find is called the Dueling Dinosaurs and is now owned by the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences. Phipps says he agreed to not disclose the price, but published reports have someone else saying it was at seven figures. Not only was it unique to find these two, two of the most iconic animals preserved together, but the state of the preservation was remarkable. Dr. Elizabeth Jones is the project manager for the museum's Cretaceous Creatures. Phipps' discovery is so special that the museum has built a new lab to study the fossil. The work brought museum paleontologists to Jordan in September, a trip of a lifetime in this line of work. It's one of the best parts of my job is to be able to uh, go out and see things that no other human has seen before, to dig stuff up and to you know, try to piece together all these pieces of information that we're seeing. Most of the good scientific fossils that we found have found their way to institutions, and I'm proud of that. I, I like to find them so other people can study them and enjoy them. Phipps loves ranching and even bought some of his first cattle with what he made on a T-Rex tooth. But now the dinosaur cowboy has given up cattle ranching in pursuit of what's buried beneath. All I ever wanted to do was be a cowboy. But then I kind of caught this disease, and now all I want to do is find fossils. <laughs> and then it's worked out. It's worked out into a nice family business. Near Jordan, David J, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 430 News here on Q2, the best of the best will tour the state and show you the top five game-changing plays from across the state on the final weekend of regular season. But first, temperatures dropping and rain may soon be on the way. Ed's in next with a full seven-day forecast for you.